So if you're buying a component from, for example, Telerik, you know that they will maintain the control over time. So let's take a look on what different components you can get if you buy the Telerik components suit. So here we have a list of the controls that they have right now. So you can see the data controls like the list view, data grid, data visualization like map, and gauche, barcode, and a lot of different charts options like spline charts, line charts, pie charts, donut charts, yeah, and so on. The editor, time span picker, time pickers, daytime pickers, and those are more advanced than the one that you get by default in .NET MAUI. You have autocomplete, you have some button controls, navigation and layouts like signature pad, expander, accordion, uh, interactivity helpers like progress bar, pop-ups, and borders, batch view. But then you also have the document processing components like word processing, spreadsheet processing, and those are really good components if you want to have document editing in your app. And this is something you don't go and build yourself because that will take so a lot of time. So in that case, you will save a lot of money by buying a component. But now let's go to the fun part, Visual Studio, and I will show you how to build an app UI with some of the progress components. So I already prepared the app a bit. It's a YouTube stats app where I will use my channel data to use those controls that you have from Telerik to visualize how my channel perform. So I already built the YouTube service so say that handle the authentication and getting the data from YouTube because that is a pretty boring part to look on but if you're interested all this source code is available on my github. So I also build a few view models like this video view model that we'll soon use. It has some code that fetching uh, all videos, the fetching metrics for the videos and then doing some mapping to a more view friendly format. So we have a video view model that we put in an observable collection. And here I'm using source generators from uh, community toolkit of MVVM. So this will generate a property of this that I can bind to in my view. So let's go to the view and start to build that. So here I already created uh, a view that we will add some content to. And here you can see MVVM, tiny MVVM, that is tiny MVVM, my own MVVM library with some helpers like uh, base view, for example. Uh, if you're interested in more about that, I can have done a video about that. You can go check out later if you want to. So, the first thing you need to do is to import the namespace. And that actually not the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is to go and install the Nougat package. And when you set up for the Telerik components, and you will have 30 days free trial for them, you will get access to their private Nougat feed that you need to add. So you can install the Telerik UI for Maui Nougat package. So let's go and create a data grid so we can show my videos in there. So we will do like this. We use the Telerik namespace. And then we will go to the RAD data grid. And RAD is a shorting for rapid. And all progress components are prefixed with that. And rapid means rapid development. I had to go and check that up because I didn't know why they have the RAD in all of their components. Then. But now I know it's for rapid and rapid development. So now we can bind this to the items proper that we have in the view model. Just like this. So, Telerik red data grid dot uh, dot columns, and now we can start to add columns here. So let's go. And here we can start to define all the columns that we want to have in our data grid. So let's do that, Telerik. And then we can have a text column. As you can see here, we have Boolean column, 
combo box column, date column, numeric column, and template column, time column. So it depends on what type of data you have. But let's start with a data grid text column. And now we need to point to the property that we want to use for this column. So property name, and that will be title because we have a property in the binded item that is title and header text can be video so this will be the header of the table or the grid if you like to call it like that so that's just that so now we can go and add a numeric one telerik data numeric column because we want to show the number of views here as well so property name views header text will be views like that okay so and now we can add two columns for likes and dislikes as well and so then we can go and try to run this on an iphone for example so let's start the application so here we have the app so let's go to the videos tab and here we have the data grid and as you can see this will not look that good on a mobile device so this will probably look better on mac catalyst when we run it on a mac where we have where we have some more space so here you can see also that we have other uh, columns that we did not add so that's because by default they will auto generate the columns so we can go here and go to the red data grid level and set auto generate columns to false and now you can see the extra columns are gone but it's still some problem here that we have too much content so my idea is that we on mobile device will replace this video um, column with an um, thumbnail column instead so let's first go and remove the video column so we can do that like this we can say is visible and then we say on idiom desktop true and on tablet we also can show that but on phone we set is visible to false that makes this only show up on desktop and on tablets so before we try to run the app again we go here and we create a new column for the thumbnail so we will do that like this telerik data grid template column and that means that we can define a template so we can put whatever content we want in here but we will still define a header text so instead of thumbnail we can say video because that is what it is it's a video so and now we say telerik colon data grid template column dot cell content template and then we put a data template in there as we do with everything in dot now where we have templates data template and now we can have an image here and let's say with a width of 60 and height 45 and aspect to aspect fit and of course we also need a source so we set a binding to thumb nail like that okay let's see how this looks when we run it on an iphone so here we have that band we go to videos and now we have a small thumbnail here and uh, of course we can also maybe hide some more 
columns if you want here or we can make the text a little bit smaller or maybe the preferred way to do this is to make the thumb a little bit bigger so we can read the text on them and also keep these views and if we click one column header by default we can sort the data so here we have my first videos i uploaded to youtube and that one doesn't have many views actually this is not a video it's a podcast episode for a podcast i did a few years ago but here we have the most popular videos with over 8,000 views and not that many dislikes so okay and then if we don't want to have sorting we can of course turn that off so we can say sort can use the sort and set that to false and we also have that for filter can user filter so false for that column and now we can see we cannot do anything here and the filter icon is also gone here so if we click here we can do some filtering but um, we also need to apply some style here for it to work in uh, dark mode and i'm not done that yet so if we want to style like the header, we can easily do that with some styles. So we go back here to Visual Studio and we can close the debugger now. And then we create a style for header. And of course we can do this in line for each column, but I prefer to put it in a resource dictionary so we can reuse it on all the columns. So let's do it like this colon tiny view dot resources because tiny view have a content page as its base class so you can just do it like this and then we can create a data grid column header style so telerik data grid column uh, we can do that for footer style and for and for some other stuff. But let's go with header style now. And of course, we need to give it a key so you can use it uh, below. So you can just call this header style. And then we can set border color, for example. And then we can use one of the colors that I have defined. So like say accent text color because we want the border to be the same color as the text and background color static resource accent color and uh, indicator color we want that one to be white as well this is the color of the filter icon for example so static resource accent text color and then we set filter indicator text color and as uh, you can see you can also set some other properties there but we can we can start with those ones accent text color just like that and now we can go and apply them so then we go down here to one of the columns like the first one here and we say header style is static resource header style and then we can apply that for all of the columns so and now we can go and run the app again and this time we can run it on a desktop uh, platform like my OS. Here we have the app and we have the and we have the data grid here. And now we can see we have this red header as we style it to, and we have video videos, so maybe we should change uh, one of those to title because it is. And we can see that we have this video column that we said it should all only be visible on um, desktop and uh, tablet so but then we have it here but we should probably rename it to title 
or something like that, or skip the text for the thumbnail column header. So if we want to style each cell, we can also do that. So let's go and style this uh, text cell because we want the text to be a bit smaller. So we do the same. We go up here to the resource dictionary and say Telerik colon data grid text cell style. Assign a key to it, like text style. And then we can define font size, for example, and we can set that one 12. And we go for that for now. Then we can go down here and say cell content style static resource text style. And we can have that one also for the other text columns. Just like that. So and now we can see that we have smaller text in the columns. So let's see if this also works on Android. So we select Android emulator and we start the app. So here we have the app also on Android and we can do everything that we could on iOS even here like sorting, filtering, yeah, scrolling and yeah. So this was a short overview of the data grid. So this was the first video where I show you some of the components from Telerik for .NET MAUI. If you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you not are doing so already. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.